Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the state of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the Atlantic County Board of Commissioners was provided in the following manner, published in the press of Atlantic City and mailed to the Current and the Hamilton Gazette, and has been posted on bulletin boards in the County yeah. Office Building, Atlantic City, the Stillwater Building in Northfield, and the County Clerk's Office in Mays Landing. Uh, we have a prayer. We have a prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God. We ask thee to grant us the wisdom to walk in thy light and the courage to accept the responsibilities placed upon us. Amen. Amen. Before we have the flagship, I'd like to offer a moment of silence uh, for two people that have passed that made uh, great contributions to the county. One was Ollie Reynolds, who worked for the county for 27 years, and uh, Mr. Tom Carver, who was the CRDA executive director. So if we could... Have just a moment of silence. Mr. Chairman, right before yes. you do that, also, I would have a moment of silence for Mr. Elwood Davis, who was the executive director of the MUA in Atlantic City, who <clears throat> passed a couple weeks back. Services will be held, um, I think, in the next couple of days. Sure. Was a um, big influence in and around Atlantic City, and we certainly keep the Davis family in our prayers and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a moment. Let's rise to the flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Chairman, Commissioner Fitzpatrick is on vacation and unable to attend today. Alice? Present. Bertino? Here. Horsey? Present. Dave? Here. Gatto? Here. Kern? Here. Parker? Present. Risley? Here. We have two sets of minutes to approve. First set is December 20th, 2022. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Moved by Commissioner Horsey, seconded by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion on the minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. One abstention, so noted. Motion carries. Moving on to the minutes of January 3rd, 2023. I entertain a motion to approve those minutes as well. So moved. Thank okay. you. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion on the minutes? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anyone in person would like to speak during public comments, please come to the podium, state your name and address, the town you reside in. You'll be provided for up to three minutes to speak. If you are attending virtually, Please type yes and the resolution number in the question and answer box. Any items not listed on the agenda, you may speak and address these during public comments. You will be erased from an attendee to a panelist. When you're raised, please state your name and the town you reside in. We have a couple of presentations this afternoon. And so uh, we're very happy to see our county executive, Mr. Denny Levinson, here. Denny, the floor is yours. Um, John, if I may, I have a motion and to do Sonia first so she doesn't have to sit through with another boring budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done. I don't know how many. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's going. Yeah. <laughs> Is it that boring? <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least the last 22 have been. But yeah. oh, they didn't do it. Is there a motion? Yeah, you don't need a motion. Go ahead. Okay. Sonia, come on up. Or George. I don't know what the other says, but <laughs> <laughs> no one exemplifies the dignity and the 
dedication of Dr. King more than you did. You're a thoroughly decent individual and all grown to love you. And for sure, we'll want to miss you. I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to take trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't find <laughs> I congratulate you on your retirement. Just remember this. Tough is part about doing nothing. You don't know when you're done. Yep. <laughs> I like that. That's cute. I like Glenn Marby six Saturdays and a Sunday. You guys open the day yesterday. Well, thank you so much, um, County Executive Levison, for this honor. Um, anything associated with Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is certainly, certainly an honor to accept and to receive. On Sunday, the uh, Fellowship of Churches of Atlantic City and the Vicinity presented me with their Reverend I.S. Hope uh, Ser Community Service Award as well. He was, he was the former pastor at my current church. And as I told everybody there, that one thing about doing community service and when you're in organizations, you can impact a greater number of people when you're working as a group. Individually, I learned that from, I hope I don't get choked up like I did Sunday, but individually I learned that from my parents, Helen and James Gillespie, because I saw my parents um, help people quietly. You know, I think the book of uh, the scripture in James says, do your good works quietly and in secret. And that's what they did. They bought groceries for people that didn't have the money. I remember one Christmas, there was a woman in our church with, Three children. She didn't know how she was going to provide Christmas. And my parents went and bought toys. So I think that's where my brother, sister, and I understood and understood and respected community service. So I, I accept this um, graciously, and I really appreciate it. Thank you this so much. Staying up. Sonia, is that your phone? No. Oh, no. Your I, phone? I have mine in my hand. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Good afternoon. <clears throat> I join you today to present the 2023 executive budget message. The budget message provides an overview of where we are at this time with the information currently available. Please keep in mind, this information may be subject to change pending state legis state action. We are, by statute, have to do it this week. And that's what we're doing. Do we have all the information? No, we don't. By the way, there's Rick Doty. No one has served us better through the years as far as waste management is concerned. And it exemplifies what we've been doing throughout the whole country. What really Rick has been in the vanguard. Um, Talk about somebody hard to replace. Barry, are you busy? <laughs> Rick, we're going to miss you. Nobody could have done better. Thank you. <clears throat> we begin a new year with concerns for the threat of a resurgence in COVID-19 cases. <clears throat> Atlanta County has lost more than a thousand <laughs> residents throughout the pandemic. Almost unbelievable when you think about it. And I can guess and say everyone in this room has met with someone who has passed. 
You know, I don't know if it's from COVID or with COVID, but we do have that number. And uh, you have COVID in the past, and that's been an argument between the right and the left the whole time. We do know that they had COVID and they died. And we do know there's a thousand citizens, in fact, north of a thousand here in our county. We cannot thank our tireless healthcare workers enough for their heroic efforts to save lives and help prevent the spread of the virulent COVID-19 virus. The Atlanta County Division of Public Health continues to provide free COVID-19 vaccinations and boosters in addition to seasonal flu shots. And it's spiking again, y'all. So it's just a matter of time. You know, you decide to, you know, you follow your own consciences on what you want to do. I know I'm speaking to uh, more than just this audience. Uh, do the right thing for yourselves and your family. The COVID pandemic has resulted in significant losses in the local, regional, and national labor pools. Businesses closed or reduced their workforce, which left individuals unemployed unemployed or seeking new location. During 2022, the Department of Family and Community Development, the workforce, Development Board implemented initiatives to encourage these individuals to take advantage of training and educational programs. The Atlanta County Economic Alliance recently received funding for a new ap apprenticeship program for our veterans and earlier last year was awarded a million dollars statewide. Uh, it was a statewide planning grant uh, to promote recovery from the pandemic through aviation related initiatives, right what we're doing here in this county. A request to reorganize the FAA and move its operations out of Atlanta County was defeated, allowing us to retain more than 4,500 jobs the FAA. The FAA, along with Atlantic City International Airport and the National Aerospace Research Technology Park, are critical assets we are leveraging to attract new businesses and create high quality, sustainable jobs. Remember what we started with, just a, a dream. And uh, when this started, I know the freeholders had called and said, well, what are we doing here, spending all this money? I said, well, let's talk about it. You guys are our partners in this, this is not, uh, I'm not dictating to you, but I believe, and the freeholders came along 100%, which I really appreciate. We could have made hay with this, this aviation part, because you no know, one freeholders said, uh, well, who are the tenants? I said, we don't have it. Well, who are the prospective tenants? We don't have any of them either, but trust me, this will be great. And uh, they got on board with uh, very little uh, opposition, and now we have ourselves something we've been asking for for over a hundred years to have an economy that's diverse, just doesn't depend on gaming, tourism, and recreation. We have it, it's growing. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, we have three buildings right now. The NARTP's first building is fully occupied with tenants. Listen to this lineup. FAA, NASA, the National Institute of Aerospace, General Dynamics, Thunderbolt, and Wolford Aviation, among others. Land is currently being cleared for the construction of a 40,000 square foot uh, second building. Approximately $8 million has already been committed for design and construction with the potential for an additional 10 million in state funding. The freeholders and I were so sure that this was going to be <coughs> something good. We would not rent when people came to us and wanted to rent an office space when we weren't completed yet. And it was not aviation, uh, we turned them down, which I think was pretty cavalier at the time. We did have a discussion, you know, bird in the hand, but we held our ground and we have something that's very, very special right now. A 2022 study by international firm Deloitte found New Jersey, led by the efforts of the ACEA and the NARTP, to be economically viable for a new sector of aviation technology known as advanced air mobility, which is essentially the use of air taxis for passenger and cargo transportation. Now, 
then you're not old enough to remember the Jetsons. <laughs> but on television, the Jetsons, for those of you that remember, they, it was a pretty modern world that they had. Almost like Dick Tracy with the, uh, with the watch and the phone and everything. You know, we met the future. It's here. <clears throat> According to the study, the industry could provide as many as 3,000 plus direct jobs, nearly 5,000 indirect jobs providing parts and services, 5,500 jobs in servicing a new workforce and 12,000 auxiliary jobs related to tourism, real estate, insurance, medical, and legal professions. The advanced air mobility sector is also projected to provide $152 million in state tax revenue over the next 15 years. We're extremely excited about these expanding opportunities. And freeholders, like I said, I really want to thank you for the cooperation that you all had because you sure could have thrown a monkey wrench in this which was referred to at one time as this pie in the, uh, in the sky scheme. Well, it's reality. We concur with the prediction of the Press of Atlantic City in its January 6th editorial. Significant results seem likely this year from Atlanta County's groundwork to grow the local aviation industry. These are all unsolicited comments that are made by uh, outside uh, entities. We also look forward to more opportunities for shared services to reduce costs for our towns and taxpayers. In 2022, we assisted towns with the purchase of computer software to help manage their floodplain activities and gain flood insurance discounts for their residents with a potential savings of up to 200,000. Other agreements provided opportunities for towns to purchase new public works, public safety equipment, and participate in a commodity resale program to acquire savings on fuel purchases. The first consolidated court of its kind uh, in the state of New Jersey is the Central Municipal Court of Atlantic County. It opened last January, now includes 10 participating, uh, participating towns of the 23. And, uh, and it's an uphill battle to get towns to give up home rule and to consolidate what they have within the town itself. And you know, if you don't come on board with us, it's fine. I read in the paper yesterday, Atlantic City and Pleasantville were talking about merging their courts. Terrific. Nobody says you have to come in with us, but make sure you, when you merge, you know, now you are saving on administrative courts, uh, uh, administrative aids, and everything else that goes along with it. So, you know, this, we're not discouraged by it. In fact, Hamilton has put together a small coalition of towns that have consolidated their courts. This is really what we want to do. We don't do it in a large scale or smaller scale. It's uh, it's more than acceptable, and uh, people have to start thinking outside the box. If you start saving money, you better start consolidating. To make doing business with Atlanta County more efficient and bulk effective, the county launched a new paperless online bidding program in August. <laughs> the new system eliminates the cost for vendors and provides them with automated uh, uh, notifications for uh, uh, bids sold solicitations. It will also be undertaken a redesign of the county website in 2023. The county approved the purchase of new voting machines and e all books to replace an aging system and further ensure the integrity of the elections. Uh, we did this with the uh, cooperation of the Russian government. So I'm sure <laughs> this is fail proof, everybody, and you have a paper trail that goes along with it. But we don't want to be listening to that. that look what happened in Williams County. Well, it really can't happen now. Famous last words. It's not on paper. <laughs> <laughs> and like Biden, it's deplorable. How did he possibly get into his <laughs> Um County taxpayers continue to benefit from the reaffirmation of the county's top tier credit ratings. During 2022, inflation rose to the highest in 40 years. Federal interest rates increased seven times, but Atlantic County was able to secure lower rates for capital projects and improvements because of our outstanding credit rating from Standard & Poor's and Moody's investors. The same high ratings we have maintained for 14 years. In addition, 
23. Perfect. Audits. Renovations and improvements to Lake Lenape Park East were completed and include a new fishing pier, pickleball courts, pavilion, and ADA accessibility. We also received $4.6 in funding for the rehab of Lake Lenape Dam and the spillway construction. Additionally, Lake Lenape Park West has been approved for a new safer uh, dock system at a policy committee and public hearing of the highlands. And we Certainly, we are, are pleased about that approval because you know, when you deal with the fire range, you're never sure in which direction it's going to go. The full commission will undertake a full, final vote at the end of January, so I don't want to speak too soon on that. Efforts to enhance public safety included the ongoing installation of accessible uh, push button traffic signals in downtown communities, as well as road and bridge improvements. <laughs> You know, the complaints we get on improving roads and bridges, um, you got to do it. There's no votes in it. And you lose votes if they collapse the bridge itself. And you know, my, my wife is here, so I'll repeat a circumstance. We're driving Tilton Road, and it's in uh, May, and they're doing construction on Tilton Road and New Road. And, she, and we waited in traffic, and she said, what idiot decided on this? And I said, you're sitting next to me. <laughs> Why would you do this? And I said, you have to explain it. And Tom said, you explain and you're losing. You know that. And I said, because the plants aren't open for the asphalt. We only have a certain amount of time to do it. We had a lot of snow starting in April and rain. So we could not do the project itself. And this is why it started late. And we're only a few days before the 4th of July. But hopefully it will get completed. But that's what you have to do. How are you going to do a road without asphalt? You can't. The plants are closed. When they do open, you got to hope it doesn't rain in April, which, by the way, uh, <laughs> you know what occurs then. So uh, she hasn't looked at me the same since. <laughs> <laughs> the county looks to. Oh, wait, uh, okay. The county looks to participate in energy savings program in 2023. Several buildings are being considered for new heating cooling system and the conversion to LED lighting. There's also an agreement to install solar panels and improve roofing systems of a number of county facilities. A new facilities warehouse will store used furniture and electronic items for auction and provide additional space for records storage. As you know, everybody, as bizarre as it may seem, you got to hold these records forever. Watch any of those crime shows. I mean, they'll go back 30, 40 years and find DNA that they hadn't seen. But had they not stored these things away, ball rides. <laughs> <laughs> Our accomplishments give us good reason to be optimistic about Atlanta County. Our conservative fiscal management and long-term planning continue to serve us well. I'm extraordinarily proud of what we have been able to achieve well still maintaining quality programs and services, low taxes, low debt, and a surplus for unanticipated circumstances. I know every year somebody says, why don't you spend all that surplus and lower the taxes? Well, so they tell them, because we're going to have next year also. And that has to be taken into consideration. By doing that, it's irresponsible. And uh, obviously, it is done in certain places. During an election year, huh? This is an election year. <laughs> there always is an election year. It just depends on how important the person running is. That is. But inevitably, there are challenges, many of which are beyond our control in preparing the 2023 budget document. We are faced with two such challenges. A steady rise in inflation and the reduction of our workforce. With as many as 300 vacancies in 2022 or 20% of our full-time positions unfilled, we have tried to attract new hires by increasing our starting salaries. Because of our reduced work, uh, workforce, we have also had to utilize outside agencies to perform certain services. Neither of these alternatives is ideal. Jerry, we have how many beds uh, we had to close down over at the Meadowview? Right, right now, we're at about 90. 90 closed and our capacity is what, 180? Think about it. Why are they closed? Can't get help? 
and uh, it's uh, you know you can't even look at your staff money anymore. You know, be with it. It's uh, something that we can solve. I don't know. I watch TV and I see unemployment went down. It went down. People have to be working. It's, but I don't know where. Everywhere you go, there's uh, low employment and help wanted signs every place. Atlanta County considered a salary increase for our workforce of more than 2% due to the rising consumer price index. During labor negotiations, we agreed to higher salary increases in exchange for unions accepting the more affordable 2030 health plan. You may say, well, why don't they do that in the first place? Because people don't like change. They get comfortable, they have votes, and the votes are many times they want to stay where they are. I don't know for how many years I've been trying to trade Lincoln's birthday to the day after Thanksgiving. Forget about it. We sent out 23 requests, we got three back. No. So I can just figure the rest of them say no also. That move helps employees pay less for health benefits, which increases their take-home pay. It also reduces the county's overall health benefits cost. Uh, with the cost from 2022 and 2023 salary increases, the salary line item is projected to increase $3 million. County governments are typically responsible for roads, bridges, and their building structures. During the past year, prices for goods and services have escalated, and the ability to obtain certain materials necessary to complete work has been impacted. It's impacted, of course, as we all know, by the supply chain and delivery lag that has also contributed to highest, higher overall projected costs. Let's think about our breakfast. I mean, who would ever figure what eggs would uh, be charged? They charge you for eggs. Eggs. <laughs> and that, of course, is because of the avian flu, maybe. But uh, holy cow, I ate cereal this morning. That's a real thing. In the proposed 2023 20, budget, there are several areas where cost increases exceed normal economic trends. One of the most pronounced is a 24% average increase in the cost of state health benefits for our local government employees. We were only told about this in September, so we had to play catch up. <coughs> After that, we were notified that the public employees and police and fire pension payments would increase by 1.5 million. I wasn't going to do it, but Frank Battle talked to me. <laughs> I'm a poor man. How am I going to get that check every morning out? The state also made two changes in the law last year that have impacted the operations and the cost of our jail. <clears throat> Adjustments to mental health services and salaries have increased the county's medical contract <clears throat> by $3.4 million. Every household is keenly aware of the dramatic rise in cost of perishable and non-perishable foods. For county government, these costs have increased by 360,000 among our senior programs, nursing, and jail. Utilities, gasoline, and traffic lights are up 800,000. County security contract has increased 171,000. We are also without the benefit of an additional 4.7 million in casino pilot tax payments for each of the past two years. In other words, the state is not meeting their obligations. They know they agreed to it back in 2018. It was a deal. We all signed it, and uh, the courts have even told it, uh, uh, the state of New Jersey, sit down with the county. Nothing. They won't speak to us about it, and nothing. I know when Governor Christie was in, you know, uh, he accused me of not being a team player. Well, what team am I on now with Governor Murphy? It's the same thing. Only different players. So things haven't changed. <clears throat> That's our money. And they're spending our money to fight them for our money. Yes. They figured that one out. You want to talk about a catch 22. Um, the state continues to use legal delays to avoid complying with the court order 
is that it must honor the 2018 consent order for settlements that provide the county with 13.5% rather than the reduced payments they gave us. And that amounts to $4.7 million. That's per year. That's where our budget would be with that. As you may recall, the pilot amendment was allegedly needed to help the casino industry recover. But by all accounts, the casinos have bounced back to pre-pandemic levels or better. <laughs> we haven't had the benefit of that. In other words, now that this has occurred, the premise isn't uh, where the premise is wrong. So correct it, not happen. <clears throat> Three superior court decisions ruled in our favor last year, but the state is appealing those decisions. The governor and his representatives have refused to speak with us to come to a resolution. Unfortunately, the longer it takes to resolve, the more costly it becomes, and the longer the non-casino taxpayers must wait for the money they were promised in a court of law. Because we do not have control of so many of these costs, it leaves us with few options to offset them. <clears throat> to meet our cap requirements, the county has used 13,800,000 uh, or 50% of the available surplus. Seems like a lot, but it's what we've done every year I've been county executive. I think one year we used 51%, another year we used 49%, but we're always around that 50% mark. The, with the information available to us at this time, Atlanta County tax levy for 2023 is 171,300,000. The general purpose tax is 43.5 cents and is down approximately two cents. So I'd love to take credit for this, but you know how Terry and Diana and Bonnie Lindau and Julie Sharkey, uh, and I could say it was with my guidance. Trust me, they're, uh, they're a great team. I'm so, I'm so pleased and I couldn't be happier. When we first began working on our 2023 budget, things looked less than promising. <clears throat> Collectively, we wondered how would we be able to maintain our low tax rate. I give tremendous credit to our departmental fiscal managers. I'm not mentioning it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we put a raise. <laughs> Thanks also to the Board of Commissioners for the continued support. I've said it many times, no county executive could be blessed with a finer group, more decent, and, uh, you know, I don't know where politics ever really comes in. The only problems we've had when we bought dead was uh, over the name of whether freeholders or commissioners. <laughs> Another one I lost, by the way. <clears throat> Challenging times require thinking outside the box and a willingness to consider educated risks. <clears throat> we risk the risk we took in establishing the ACEA, the developing of the NARTP is now providing us with growing opportunities. But we can leave Atlanta County better than we found it. We can all be proud. With your help, <clears throat> and this Sign a script. <laughs> I am confident that we will meet that goal and remain the best run county in the state of New Jersey. Thank you for being here. And three all of us, thank you so very, very much for your cooperation. We're all pulling in the same direction. That's what makes us the best run county in the state. Thank you. And now I understand you're in for a real treat. Yes, we are. I'd just like to reiterate one thing you said, which is so important. We don't have all the figures in yet, and uh, we should. We got to keep that in mind as well as we, as we go along here. But things are looking well. They are, and they may uh, improve if the state decides to give us what we're entitled to. Imagine what that'll do. We may save it for next year. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's. Close to five million. So. Well, thank you again for joining us and the budget message. And uh, I think what we'll do is I'll ask for a brief recess so we can reset the room <clears throat> to have a motion. Move. Second. Second.
Thank you. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. You're making a motion to resume. So moved. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Why, why do you pass to get me in trouble? Because it's easy. It's why easy. Why don't I listen? <laughs> why don't I listen? <laughs> All right. We have an interview to do. We have a, a gentleman here that's going to be volunteering his time. The Atlantic Beach Community for College Board of Trustees. Which is under resolution 37. Madam Clerk, please read it. Appointment of Mark H. Sanson to the Atlantic Cape Community College Board of Trustees, resolution number 37. Move. Move. Second. Move. Move. Second. We're very honored to have you here today. Thank you. And uh, I'm honored to be here. Appreciate your service. And uh, please, uh, we know a lot about you, but please uh, tell the public who you are. It's only about 45 minutes, you don't mind you. Uh, <laughs> Another direction. Right. I reserve the balance of dead time. Not much I to say. Um, my name is Mark Sanson. I'm a uh, lifetime Atlantic County resident. I currently reside in Linwood. I uh, attended Atlantic City High School. I uh, came back to Atlantic City worked for the... Atlanta County Prosecutor's Office immediately after I graduated from law school. I practiced law in Atlantic City for almost 30 years. I think it was 29 years. Um, and then I was appointed to the bench in 2007. I think that was 2007. Uh, I served for approximately 13 years until they kicked me out when I was age 70. Uh, as a mandatory retirement, so I was thrust out onto the street with uh, nothing to do. <laughs> so what I've been trying to do is to, you know, do to give back to the community. You saw my good friend Ambrose Bray a month or two ago. At least I don't have the problem of hitting him. <laughs> uh, so I'm working with him in the uh, Leaders and Training Program at Atlantic City. I'm on the board of uh, JFS, Jewish Family Services. And I've always, frankly, been interested in Atlanta Community College. When I... Was right. Actually, I talked about your Gabber earlier today. I, she said she would see me, so presumably, perhaps she's watching. Um, you know, I'm I'm in charge of a statewide jobs program with Judge Grant, uh, where we're trying to do workforce development for the entire state. We have we're operating currently under a three million dollar Department of Labor grant. So it's increased next year. It's going to be extremely successful. Trying to find the community college system in uh in this workforce development area as they're extremely active i've been to the atlantic city campus i met with them together with our atlanta county probation people uh they're very very uh active in workforce development and that's really where the answer if there is a question i don't know what it is but the answer to um the horrendous recidivism rate we have and we observe in the courts now size 60 percent of the people they go to state prison and they're back in state prison. It's a, it's a sad statistic. And what is the answer? The answer is trying to get people gainfully employed at a, reasonable, at a living wage with benefits, which is the goal of what we're trying to do. Uh, if we can do that, can we reduce recidivism? I think so. We've done everything else, and it has not worked. And I think the community college system is a big part of that. It's a less expensive alternative in terms of getting, getting edu A, education, but B, certifications that will lead to meaningful jobs. And that's what I, that's why I'm interested in the community, community college system in the state. Um, and that's what I think I have to offer is probably some help with making some liaisons for uh, Atlantic uh, College and uh, sources of training, which is really what we need. And we need to get all, we also need to get our young kids, maybe start earlier in the high school, in the high schools, trying to get them involved and in understanding where their future Blaze doesn't doesn't lay and you know running around the streets at two o'clock in the morning getting shot in the head. So uh, you know if we can convince kids to do that, which we are in leaders of training. Um, you know it's an interesting statistic, and all the kids that have been through leaders of training, perhaps like two hundred fifty every summer. Not one kid has got even gotten arrested because they pay fifteen dollars an hour, which is often more than their family makes, uh, and uh, nobody wants to lose a job if if they if they're convicted of a crime, they may immediately uh, lose their status in, in that program. So uh, it's funded by the CRDA. I think it's very successful. It's going to be funded in February. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But at, uh, the community college, I think, is a big piece of, the, of this puzzle for Atlanta County. And I'd like to be involved in it. Well, we certainly appreciate your time because there's no more precious gift than the gift of time. Right. And we, we know this as we get older. Correct. <laughs> you only have so much of it, right? Exactly. Exactly. 
Okay. Anyone have any comments or questions? Just, Mr. Just, a, just a comment. Obviously, uh, Mark, your, your background, your expertise, you're going to be a perfect fit, um, obviously. Uh, we're lucky to have you, and I know Atlanta County is going to be uh, is better for you serving on the board. Uh, education is the key. Right. Education, getting people out and opportunities to move from over their lives and, and to live, because that's what all of us really want to do, is have a nice take, life. And take care of your kids, uh, right? And that's, what, that's what it's all about. Now, when people are running the streets and are not, uh, you know, really are not, are living in this fantasy world, they don't take care of anybody, including themselves. They don't see a way out. And, and dying at record in record numbers from violence and also from overdoses. So, uh, you know, I think it's all part of the same puzzle. I'm not saying I'm going to cure, cure the whole problem, but I think I have some constructive ideas about it. Excellent. Very pleased. Thank you. That's okay. Um, I forgot. I, I don't think there's any question to ask you, Judge, because obviously um, I think many of us know you and know your service and um, certainly qualified. So I'm really excited to have you uh, as, the, as a member of the trustees. Um, in your programs that you mentioned, though, I just want to kind of throw out if it's not connected already. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're also working with our workforce development. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Fran, Fran yeah. And, and, and Kuhn and I have met on numerous occasions. I uh, actually got him in touch with the family department uh, in terms of providing some of this workforce development money for kids who are aging out of DIFUS or DC P&P. He told me he's had a problem connecting with DIFUS. And they have money. We're, we're returning about $2 million a year back to DOL from Atlantic that are allocated for Atlantic County because they can't find uses for the money, which is nuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Given all the kids that are, and these are kids that are aging out of diapers or turn 18, and they have absolutely no chance of succeeding because they don't have any education. And in some cases, it's not all, but a significant portion of them. So, yeah, Fran is a very, he is very eager to work with us, and he's a big piece of the puzzle. And the other piece I just want to mention is the Ideal Institute of Technology. I'm, I'm not sure if you're connected with that group I'm as not. well, but they're kind of an arm of the workforce development programs that we have. Um, they also help to bring education and, and jobs uh, to at-risk youth and young adults, um, even helping them to get like GEDs, things like right. that. What we're talking about basically is certification is leading to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. do I want people to go to Harvard and get, get a master's in history? Sure, that's great if you have the money to do it. But what I'm looking for is people to get certified as a you know, truck driver, get certified in phlebotomies, get certified in yeah. jobs that are begging every day. You can get these jobs if you have these certifications. A big issue, a big issue is if you have a criminal record, in many cases, the statutes give you an incredibly hard time of getting those jobs, even if you're qualify for the jobs, which is nuts. Now, we have worked hard, uh, and, and, and I give credit to my friend Joe Gingoli, and I've met with uh, Jim Plausis and trying to get the, the statutes for the casinos changed, and they have, been, they have been changed. And I have to tell you, Bob McDevitt was a big piece of that as well, trying to get them changed so we could get people who had who were on probation, had you know, do want to find their way back to the community, uh, and have not been, been allowed to. They've gotten rejected for licensure, even for people like, you know, working non, I'm not talking about counting money in the counting room, I'm talking about people who are cleaning the common areas and, and maids and butlers and so forth, people who work in the casinos. And, and for us to say, you're on probation, you can't do one of those jobs, is insane. I mean, if you're, if you're rehabilitated, you, you got to go to work or else you're not going to be staying re rehabilitated for long. So, I mean, that those are key issues, and that some, of them, some of which we've taken. And every time we've, we've approached the legislature with something like that, it's, they've been very accommodating to make those changes because we have to. If we don't, then we're going to have the same crap going on for forever. Yeah, I just mentioned the Ideal Institute because there is there is a gentleman there and part of that program that tries to help I will, people I will, navigate. I will even Rod Green, um, I would highly recommend um, because he's even uh, tried to assist with, you know, getting people housing assistance and things like that um, right. who are trying to. It's all part of the puzzle. Exactly. You can't find, yeah. Yeah, we talk about criminogenic factors. I won't bore you forever because I know that uh, everybody wants to go. But, you know, what are criminogenic factors? They're factors which make people commit crimes, you know, create crimes. Number one is mental, mental health. You only need that. Number two is homelessness. Number three is unemployment. Uh, so you have those those factors that are all it's all one problem. Mental health is very difficult to do anything about. 
try as you might, that's a, 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 an attractable, attractable problem. But certainly homelessness, we can get into by getting people jobs. That's a way of getting at homelessness. If you have a decent wage, you can get a place to stay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chair, yes. um, before we impose our four-year sentence <laughs> on the, Mr. Sanson, let me just say uh, this is going to be a four with no parole. Um, there's no early out. No, no early, no near it. Any, uh, no, no early release act. Right. right. So it's before, before it's a, you hit the gavel, and, uh, you were sentenced to four years. I'm here. I'm healthy. I'll do it. I want you to know that uh, on a serious note, you have given back to this community over and over and over, even as the judge. Um, drug court. There was times folks went to your court, you could have just thrown them in jail. Right. You choose not to do that. Right. Your program is a model in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. So your work speaks for itself. Uh, folks in the community college and the community is certainly blessed to have. You wanted to continue to serve uh, in this community. Folks, get right off to the sunset. And you know, and I go way back to, right. as I said earlier, to the Baltimore Grill days, and you still owe me pizza, so you're I not getting off. So. I mean, I don't remember, um, but it's, it's, it's I, I, mean, mean, I actually thought you were going to bring pizza. pizza. Things that nobody would believe. That. Yes. We, I get into it. Now. It's like, we, we won't even talk about the former president. We go with you back. But um, I thought maybe you was going to bring pizza today. Yeah, sure. um, such a big Baltimore grill guy. Yeah, I but, uh, we wish you well. And by the way, the pizza is good again now. It went to a downside. Yeah. Down <laughs> <spot. laughs> they don't get like no cake. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it was. Yeah. I don't know who goes to Baltimore Grill the most, you or Jerry, but it's okay. Yeah. 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 You, you can't spend all you have now, and it's not the case. The fact of the matter is, you continue to give back to this community. It's, it says a lot. Um, I wish you well. And um, county exec pre warned me that uh, you were going to be coming to the board. Right. I told him I don't know if the board was ready for Mark. Maybe not. Maybe not. John and Frank, of course, at the same time. Right, but right. I guess I guess it'll work out. It'll, it'll, it'll work out. Okay. So, uh, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any Thank other you. comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Congratulations. Reminds me one story I'll tell. And then they, we, I we used to go to the, part of a job on the lawyer, I used to go to the Casino Control Commission, and they had one very contrary commissioner. I won't even mention his or her name. And they had, they had a vote every quarter for the employee of the quarter. And it was nice. They'd bring that employee in and they would, uh, you know, they'd say, well, how great he or she was. And then they'd have a vote. It was always set at five, five to nothing. So I went there and, and I was sitting there and all of a sudden it's this one guy votes against the employee of the quarter. So, you know, <laughs> that happened. Hey, listen, you could have been Kevin McCarthy and went to 14 votes. You got it on the front row. <laughs> First one. Yay. Hey. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. All right, moving on with our resolutions. Madam Clerk, please read number 13. Amending resolution number 170, adopted on March 16, 2021, to grant agreement with the State of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs, Division of Local Government Services, to approve the scope of work change request for the Local Efficiency Achievement Program grant to extend the term date, no additional cost. Move. Second. Been regularly moved by Commissioner. Uh, Turned seconded by uh, Richard Gatto. Okay. All right. Uh, discussion on the resolution. Just briefly, um, what this pertains to is uh, the court system and the completing of documents. Any discussion on it? No, roll call, please. Atlas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 14. Amending resolution number 668, adopted on December 6, 2022, a grant agreement with the United States Department of Health and Human Services for the federal fiscal year 2022 overdose data to action operation helping hand grant to include the subgrant number, no additional cost. Move. Second. 
Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Hearn? Yes. Parker? Yes. Brislin? Yes. And number 15, please. Grant application to the New Jersey Transit Corporation for fiscal year 2019 Federal Transit Act Section 5310 grant funding amount not to exceed 77000 Move. Second. Commissioner <coughs> Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Rizlin? Yes. And please read resolution number 16. Grant acceptance from the New Jersey Association of County and City Health Officials with guidance from the New Jersey Department of Health to support continued COVID-19 response and enhance local health department infrastructure. Amount not to exceed $2,017,296. Ooh, second. second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Kern. Uh, any commissioner comments? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertina? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 17. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Office of the Attorney General for the federal fiscal year 2018 addressing the needs of juvenile prosecutor grant program amount not to exceed six thousand five hundred fifty six dollars. Moved. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Um, any discussion? Any public input? Hearing none, call the roll call. Ballas? Yes. Martina? Yes. Corthy? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Brisley? Yes. Number 18. Amending resolution number 675 adopted on December 6, 2022, a professional services agreement with various consultants for the 2023 engineering services pool for the dam and transportation infrastructure projects to that add additional consultants, no additional costs. Moved. Okay. And moved by Commissioner Kern, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any comments from the public on this resolution? Hearing none, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 19. Renewal competitive contracts with various vendors for the provision of home care services under the Division of Welfare and State Respite Grant Programs amount not to exceed $335,138. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kern, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? I think we're all well versed in the uh, State Respite Grant Program. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for families. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 20. Renewal competitive contract with Barron Jewish Older Adult Services to provide nursing services to include both physical health and health education. Amount not to exceed $36,000. Mm -hmm. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Kern. Discussion? Any public comment? None. Roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Ridley? Yes. Number 21, please. <clears throat> Bid contract with Ocean Construction Limited Liability Company to provide masonry maintenance and repairs to various Atlanta County locations. Amount not to exceed fifty-four thousand dollars. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Bertino. Second by Mr. Gano. This is a two-year contract. 
Any other discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, roll call, please. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes, please read resolution number 22. Big contracts with various vendors to furnish and deliver janitorial and custodial supplies to members of the Atlanta County Cooperative amount not to exceed $116,912.69. Moved Second. by Commissioner Kern, seconded by Commissioner Corsi. Any discussion? Any public input? Hearing none, roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read number 23. Big contract with Tri County Termite and Pest Control Incorporated to provide pest management services for various county locations. Amount not to exceed one hundred six thousand nine hundred forty dollars. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi. Second by Commissioner Gatto. This is uh, also a, a two-year contract. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Ballas. Yes. Bertino. <clears throat> yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Please read number 24. Big contract with Schmidt Baking Company to furnish and deliver miscellaneous bread and bakery products to Atlanta County, amount not to exceed $21,059.15. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Kern. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Commissioner? Just wondering. Uh, one bidder, right? Yeah, one bidder. Is it something, is it a special item that nobody else makes? Or, why would, I mean, for all the bakeries in this area, we end up with one bidder. I really thought that for making a fry tag was going to, because yeah. he's not here anymore, but <laughs> they, they did. I think it's regular bread, but. I guess we're getting a good price, right? I mean. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay. Any other comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Ridley? Yes. Please read number 25. Big contract with Kisby Lee's Mechanical Limited Liability Company trading as Kisby Shore Corporation for the new HVAC upgrades to the IT UPS room at the Anthony Canale Training Center. Mount not to exceed $193,620. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Discussion? Mr. Chair? Commissioner? Yes. Jerry, uh, I, I guess to whoever. Right. I mean, almost $200,000 for one IT room. Right. What, what are we putting in there? What, I mean, is it all new equipment? Well, it's, 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 it's just the HVAC you're putting in, right? Yeah, and I, I believe there's also fire suppression, too. I, it, is Chris there? Chris, go ahead. Yeah, we're we're completely uh, redoing the room because we're we're um, we're getting new IT equipment, and this new new IT equipment is a little bit more high tech than what's in there now. So the room has to be completely redone. So that means taking out all this. We're completely de demolishing the room. We're taking out all the ceiling grids. We're taking all the existing fire suppression systems out of there. New flooring has to be put down. The condensing unit for the um, for this uh, particular uh, HVAC unit is going to be outside. So we have to pour concrete outside. We have to put a security fence in. It's it's quite involved. Okay, Mr. So, Martino. Yeah. Okay. Kids be sure is then GC in the whole thing, a HVAC contractor? Yes. Yeah, because that's all it is. It's HVAC and electrical and with a little with this fire suppression. Yes. Just one quick question, Chris. It's um, uh, are you putting in the dampers, air dampers, outside fresh air, all that's going in with the system? Yes. Yeah, there's going to be new louvers have to get cut in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the the pricing was actually uh, we had away. estimated. We actually had the project estimate a little bit higher, so it did come in under our estimate. Yeah, they're, they're the lowest bid. It just seems like a lot for all her. Any other discussion? 
Any public comment? Three none. Roll call, please. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horthy? Yes. Days? Yes. Data? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read number 26, a change order. Change order number one, a contract with Arrowac Paving Company Incorporated for the resurfacing of Mill Road, County Route 651, Section 7A and part of 7B in the City of Abstergen, net increase $34,426.31. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, seconded by Commissioner Kern. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Chase? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read resolution number 27. Lease agreement with the City of Portman City for canine training facilities, amount not to exceed $60,000. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Kern. Any discussion? This is something we've done for many, many, many years. Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Dallas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read number 28. Amending resolution number 224 adopted on April 20, 2021, and alternate. Alternate method contract for vehicle leasing associates to lease undercover vehicles for confidential and undercover investigations for Atlanta County Prosecutor's Office. Net increase one hundred and forty four thousand dollars. Moved. Second. <coughs> Moved by Commissioner Bowles, second by Commissioner Kern. This is a two year extension, as I understand it. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, through you uh, to Jerry. <coughs> With this type of money, is any of this money being used out of the forfeiture fund to the prosecutor's office? They, they get a grant for this. And, and, and I think the uh, fiscal officer, Matt Paley, is on. He can, he can explain how they got this money. We, we question why they were going out of state, but there's, there's a whole rationale behind why they're doing this. These are undercover cars, and so they're... Uh, so so let me let, let me do this, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Please. I, I'm familiar yes. regarding undercover vehicles okay, and renting right. and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we do it right. um, in the city as well. Right. I just didn't know if they were using some of their forfeiture monies to go towards this as well as county taxpayers' money uh, to do it. But if you seem to be satisfied with the, I don't want the long dissertation. Yeah. If you say it's right. a whole lot of, oh, I I believe this is they, they're they're getting some grant funding for this. this, this. High intensity. Uh, okay. Funding, you know. Good. Mr. Yeah, just uh, just to answer your question, uh, Commissioner. It's it's a federal HIDA grant, so it's all it's federal money that they they have to spend on the vehicles. Okay. I appreciate. It. Any other discussion? Any comments from the public? <clears throat> Hearing none. Roll call, please. Ballas. Yes. Martino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Days. Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read number 29. Alternate method contract with Tra Trapeze Software Group Incorporated doing business as Trip Spark Technologies to provide software maintenance used by the Atlanta County Transportation Unit, amount not to exceed $64,150. Second. Moved by Commissioner Borsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Bays? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read number 30. Alternate method contract with Computer Square Incorporated to provide annual software maintenance service for info share records management system. Amount not to exceed $93,600. dollars Okay. Moved by Commissioner Corsi, second by Commissioner Gatto. Discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. Number 31, please. 
EUS contract with the Atlantic County Economic Alliance concerning development and issuance of a request for proposals for one stop operator and career services amount not to exceed forty thousand dollars. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kern, second by Commissioner Parker. Any discussion? This is this is something new. Um, this is a federal mandate that our uh, Atlantic County Economic Alliance is taking up to uh, secure proposals and write the job description. So it's a federally mandated uh, program. And I can just imagine that this probably came about because there was problems across the country with it. So, so they're going to they're going to do the job for us to develop the, uh, the proposals for our one stop and career center. Any other discussion? Public comment. Roll call, please. Ballas. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Horsey. Yes. Days. Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Brislin? Yes. Please read number 32. Acceptance of deeds, easements from various grantors in accordance with Atlantic County planning standards. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Kern. These are a collection of uh, uh, deeds. Any public discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Brislin? Yes. Please read number 33. Resolution of support for the City of Summers Point concerning construction and maintenance of New Jersey Transit bus stop shelters at various locations within the right of way of Mays Landing Road, County Route 559, and Shore Road, County Route 585. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Kern, second by Commissioner Gatto. Any discussion? With your guest, Alice. Mr. Chair, um, to Jerry, um, this just brings um, to mind a question that was asked um, last year, reference to um, the traffic study and Summers Point's request to reduce the speed limit on Summers Point Bay's Landing Road. Um, I know the bike lanes are now all painted in, and there is substantial amount of bike traffic, and I can imagine summertime there will be much more. Right. Um, there always is um, pedestrians that are, are walking that roadway uh, with very limited um, sidewalk. Um, so they're walking in the shore and, you know, um, to go to the bus stops, you know, two of which are going to be now shelters there. Um, any, are we anywhere with that? I know the county denied that request to reduce that and the traffic study was supposed to be done. Are, are we anywhere with that? What? They did, the, they did it, stop warranted, but I mean, if okay. it, once now that the bike paths are in and people are, maybe there's more traffic there, and obviously this will attract more people to go there, obviously if they're, if they're a bus. Right, I, I know there's there's two speed signs there right. that are there right. now, and right. I don't know if that was the county to put them or some points. Well, that's to our so. road, that's our okay. road. Yeah, yeah so there's, there's yeah. two electronic I, I can ask speed them again. signs. Yeah, I can ask them again to go look at it, just do that. Yeah, just trying to get ahead of, you know. We don't want to happen there, which right. has happened on Oceanside right. though. Except you, know, you can't stop, you know. Uh, well, you can't stop stupid. I right. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Please call a roll. Oh. Should I say again? Public. Public. Oh, sorry. Public comment. There being none, please call the roll. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corti? Yes. Bates? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Brislin? Yes. Page read number 34. Annual designation of Atlantic County's public agency compliance officer pursuant to NJAC 17 colon 27 dash 3.3. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Kern. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, I believe yes. this is one of our newer uh, employees taking on this role, so I uh, just want to welcome Ms. Flynn. Thank you. Any other discussion? Public comment? Please call the roll. Alice? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read resolution number 35. 
Amending resolution number 572 adopted on October 18, 2022, an alternate method contract with Excella Incorporated for a data management system to extend the term date and amount not to exceed $38,880. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kern, second by Commissioner Gano. Discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dace? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. Please read resolution number 36. Alternate method contract with Excella incorporated for three additional licenses and support, amount not to exceed $5,071.29. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatto, second by Commissioner Kern. Discussion. Any public comment? Hearing none, please call the roll. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. We have a number of appointments. Chair will entertain a motion to combine and adopt 38 through 43. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we're at the point of our agenda for reports of a committees of the board. Anybody would like to report on anything? Commissioner Gatto? Mr. Chair, uh, it's not technically a roads and bridges report, but on my favorite topic of uh, Route 30 and Cologne Avenue. Um, the signs are out, the construction signs are out. Uh, thank you to Tara for calling me with such joy on Friday when she saw it. Um, I rode out immediately to check it out, I took a picture of it. Um, so the construction signs are out, and I believe Jerry passed along today um, that they resent the notice of construction to begin uh, and it looks like they will be starting um, looks like next week at some point so um, something good happens actually good. I think gonna happen great <laughs> no trucks are out there right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of things to mention um, talking about non-paying jobs I am again chair of the South Shores Economic Development District, which uh, I certainly enjoy doing. And at our last uh, meeting we had, I was informed that our executive director, Mr. Lou Joyce, has been with us plus seven, eight years, is retiring. So we will be uh, looking and posting a, a re for a replacement for the executive director of the South Shores Economic Development District. I also um, attended um, a 4-H awards night, and of course, this county supports the 4-H. They have uh, over 20 clubs there, and I was there uh, helping to honor the various recipients that volunteer their time to the 4-H program. And lastly, I attended a uh, retirement dinner for Marge Dordak, who was with our Board of Elections Department for uh, 20 years, and uh, that completes what I have to say. Anyone else? I would like to um, congratulate the two, I guess the two events that I went to for Martin Luther King um, celebrations. I was with Commissioner Corsi at one, the Lang City, City of Lang City put together with the NAACP, Lang City branch of the NAACP put together a nice, uh, Celebration. It was a, a walk from uh, Martin Luther King School down to the Civil Rights Garden and then to St. James Aim Church. And also, I'd like to say that I also attended um, Mount Zion Baptist Church in Pleasantville. They had a uh, nice performance as well, or a nice um, program for Martin Luther King. A celebration. It was focused on the children, which you know I love as a teacher. It was kids center, and the kids came out. The Joker's cheerleading team came out, and they did a performance. It was uh, pretty nice that they uh, focused on the kids and the youth in their dreams and our role as adults, and to to help guide them towards their dreams. So that was nice. So that's the two that I have. Good report. Anyone else? Moving into unfinished business. 
new business, written communications and petitions. Yeah, sure. What's your days? Um, I, you know, obviously we, we probably all seen the news recently about the, the whales that have washed up here locally in the county, Atlantic City and, and Brigantine. Um, I, I have received several emails and phone calls from people. Um, I know our state center, um, Palestina was all national news yesterday. Um, I, I, I do want to, I, I guess, acknowledge that you know, people are concerned. People, you know, I don't see the obvious. I'm not a marine biologist, um, but I, I kind of do want to, you know, I think support our congressman and our state senator who have asked for, you know, a pause in the uh, the operations out there. You know, the sonar that's going on as they're mapping the ocean floor for the proposed windmill projects. Um, you know, having said that, I'm not a marine biologist. I've kind of done my research, but I haven't seen anyone say. But definitively that you know, the, the operations out there are causing these whales to wash up or definitively that they're not. Um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of information out there. I don't know if it's accurate or not about, you know, how much is uh, being given to these organizations that are doing the autopsies on the whales. Um, you know, having said that, I mean, I, I don't recall a, 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 such a large number of whales washing up in, uh, you know, such a close proximity of time. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't think they're other than, these companies losing money, um, any reason to not pause it until we kind of, you know, maybe have a more definitive answer as to what's going on. So just want to acknowledge that, you know, those emails that I've received and, and my support for those calls. Thank you. We just want answers if we can get them. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Okay. Now I'll open the meeting up to the public. If there's any public that would like to speak on any issue, now's the time. This is Caterson. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Lynn Caterson. <clears throat> I live at 904 Marlboro Avenue in Epsidia. And I'm um, just here to uh, thank you for the support I know we're getting for our Epsidian Citizens of the Year. I did uh, indicate to all of you that we were having a celebration uh, next week. Uh, these are three men without whom we would not have the 9-11 memorial in Absecon. And even if you can't make the celebration, I want to invite you all, if you're driving by City Hall in Absecon or on Mill Road, please stop. Please take a look, read what we've written. Um, it's hard to imagine, but none of our children in school today remember. <clears throat> they all weren't here then. And one of the catch phrases of this event is, we will never forget. And they don't even know what happened. So we try very hard through with schools in Epsecon, and I invite schools all over the county, come learn about the event, what happened, the lives that were lost, the fabulous rescues that happened. And I want to thank you all uh, for your consideration. My understanding is there'll be certifications, Mr. Chair, that will be Hi, I will be there. And uh, I thank you all. Come to Epsecon and see that 9-11 memorial. It's, it's really worth your time. Thank you. Thank you. And it truly is. Anyone else like to speak? We have anyone online would like to speak? Anything for the good of the order? Chair, I just uh, have two comments. Uh, January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Uh, the state of New Jersey is considered to be a hub for this type of activity in part because we're positioned between so many major cities, but also being a <laughs> tourist uh, destination, you know, with casinos. And this really affects, you know, right now most of the trafficking is women and uh, children, both sexes, uh, with children. And uh, yeah, I just want to point out, there, there's quite a bit of information out there. And it's all, if you see something, say something. And to those celebrating the Chinese New Year this coming weekend, Happy New Year and welcome to the Year of the Rest. And Chinese culture, yeah, the rabbit's a symbol of long, uh, longevity, speed, peace, and prosperity. It'll be a year uh, for all of us to all. So, 
Mr. Chair, Commissioner. <clears throat> yes, um, reference to um, Ms. Garrison's comments. Um, first of all, then, um, three great choices. I mean, even if they didn't have anything to do with the, the monument, um, their dedication to the city of Absecon <clears throat> over all the years um, is well deserved. Um, shame, of, shame of it that you know, two of them are passed away prior to getting it in person, but um, great thought to, to have this um, awarded to them this year. Um, secondly, are you anywhere with getting that marker that you wanted the, the monument marker put on that state roadway in front of that, or is it still being denied by the state? Which is not. Yeah, I mean, the last it was uh, that the state shut it down. I mean, it said they won't allow them on, on state roadways. I, mean, I think I even asked the our, our engineering department to kind of look into it, if we could appeal it. And uh, it's, I, I mean, it's been a while since we followed up, but I got a, a letter I think even from our state representatives at the time. Okay. Yeah, I said didn't know, you know, if that's something we wanted to put a, a resolution, you know, asking our uh, assembly and, and senator to, you know, look into. I mean, you put deer crossing signs, you put right. duck crossing signs. You can't put a you can't put a sign that says nine one one memorial ahead. No, I, I agree. And I even argue that no it's sense. on the state registry of nine eleven memorials. Exactly. Um, so, but no, I think we should. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I think I'll we send should. you something. That's a good idea. And, uh, you can email me something on what your request is, um, Ms. Caterson. And we'll, we'll do a resolution on that. I, I would state. I would appreciate it. You've all done so much, and <clears throat> quite honestly, all the things on your plates obviously are far more important than a marker. Yeah, although, really. although, as I said, if there's a marker and uh, a fifth grader sees it, then it's, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, teacher, what is this? What does it even mean? Uh, 9 11, does, is that an emergency? Are we, you know, it, it's another way that we won't ever forget that day. And I know you all, and I too, can tell you exactly where I was, sure. what the weather was like, what I was doing when the planes hit. Sorry. So <clears throat> we remember. We've got to make sure everybody keeps remembering. Mr. Chairman, if I may, of course. <coughs> Who did you say turned it down? The state. state. In New so if the state is not going to allow it on the state highway, roadway, why don't you petition the city of Absecon and use one of their streets? Oh, that's, right? that's, that's round mm -hmm. one thought. Secondly, there is a number of lots leading up to that area. I know who the property owner is, and maybe they allow you to put some kind of marker there, pointing at just a thought. Don't just don't let the state, because the state, state probably going to answer, it's going to probably just say. By my favorite so, department. Uh, <laughs> say again? By my favorite department. Yeah, 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 if it takes longer to get an answer, then she got there uh, Route 30. You'd be waiting a long time, but it's just a thought. Maybe the city of Absey can, can designate one of their street. Like in Atlantic City on Boston Avenue, we had Purple Way, right? It's hanging over top of one of those street lights or traffic lights, and everybody know where it's at. So that's that's kind of like a thought. Don't let the state stop you. Come up with a different idea. The street sign. That's a great idea. Between the city and the county, I'm sure we can get that. <clears throat> figure something out. Yeah, either way. Yeah. There's maybe more than one mark. Let me say this to you. Let you take it to roads and bridges. Keno is. He may be able to get something made up right away. <laughs> Gold medal might even pay for it. Who knows? That, but we'll give yes, us a point. I have a question for good order. Sure. I don't want to let the time lapse because I know it's coming up, Jerry. If you could help guide me on this, it's about the ACUA, and I received a few emails of concern from municipalities about the fees going up. And I, I believe they have a meeting on Thursday. And so the call was for us to kind of get involved with a commissioner's board before that meeting. If, if, if we don't take action on any on anything today, does their meeting 
when they're done their meeting, is that final? Is is it is it a done deal? It, is that what we're facing here? Well, they've submitted their budget to the state. It's been approved. And I mean, Rick is really the person you need to talk to. But Rick, I think Rick was here and said he that was here. They what? met and they met. Well, but he was here today, and he's also been here and explained both of the budgets and and the and the um, the increases. And I think he explained that they've been meeting with all of the participants that they serve. So it's not like they didn't know this was going up. And they explained each each each. For example, in wastewater. They, they met with all 14 and in any of the towns that they have for solid waste, they explained it to them. Even with those increases, they're still the lowest in the state. I mean, so so getting Rick to that question, is it, is it more permanent? I call Rick directly. I think that would be the best and most appropriate way. Question so, for Dave? Yeah, so I, I guess, I mean, as a follow-up, they're meeting yeah. Thursday and I mean, it may or may not be a done deal, but I also have heard from towns, you know, they're they're facing the same thing the county is, but their right. their, their health insurance yeah. benefits jumping up, yeah. their pension yeah. contributions jumping up, and now they're, I mean, looking at from eleven to thirteen to you know, depending upon their flow, the increase in their ACA, um, you know, costs, which is all you yeah. know, they have no place to go but to pass it on to the taxpayers who. You know, as, as our county executive just said, are already facing all these other increased costs from, from eggs to fuel to, you know. Right. I mean, do we have any any role? I mean, I know this has been asked back and forth, but uh, I mean, at this point late in the game, I mean, I, it's just the concern is that they're being hit with, you know, double digit increases in those three areas and there's nothing they can do. And that's and that the same thing. If you remember when Rick was here, he went through them with you. He went through his fuel costs, personnel costs. But, but, and but, but more importantly, you know, and, and Bonnie's here, so Bonnie heard it today. Rick, Rick went to, let's talk about solid waste. Rick, Rick was going to every town that they had and suggested to them that they go out and did this. Just don't take whatever ACUA said that their costs were going to, to, to compare them. So, I, I mean, so, I mean, as, as of today, I think he even said there was another town, I don't want to. Mentioned it because mm -hmm. you know, don't want to give anybody you know, away to anybody that might bid on the contract, but they went out and they're going to bid. But other other places have bid as well, and the ACUA was always the lowest. And they they told them up front, it's going to cost you more money, and here are the reasons why. We want you to go out and bid this. They would go out and bid. In some cases, they couldn't get any bids, and in the cases where they got the bids, they were much higher than. What the ACUA said they were going to provide. I don't know. I mean, that's one of them just towns just had their meetings last week, so it's just that one week to. And, the, and, the, and as you know, as it works, the emails are coming in to us last minute to to, right. to intervene in the process. Right. And I'm not sure if that's appropriate or necessary. So that's kind of the question that I'm asking: Is it appropriate for us to make some sort of decision tonight before their meeting? to say this is where we stand or is it appropriate to allow the meeting to take place because you're right. I mean, he did come before us. We all heard it. We all heard the right. reasons why, you know, and, and I'm certainly not questioning those things, but if I, we're, we're receiving phone calls and emails from municipalities, we, we don't want to, you know, our meeting to go and none of us spoke about it. None of us brought this up for a topic right. because they're counting on us to, to bring it up. Uh, Commissioner Bertino, just a couple of couple of comments on it. the bidding process that um, that we do with solid waste. Um, the devil, whenever you do a bid, is always in the details when you read the bid specs. So bid specs, a lot of times, um, from the ACUA being the county agency, they can do some things that the private sector as a hauler can't do. Um, liquidated damages that private haulers get charged on contracts add to the bids. There's a lot of different uh, particulars in it where there's some advantages for that the county, Atlantic, that ACUA has in that open bid process. It's just the nature of it because they're a governmental agency. So when you start talking about competition with private sector and stuff, there's going to be some additional cost the private sector has to incur because a lot of times in the, in the, in the, on the governmental side, they are able to take advantage of the language and documents because you're doing an interlocal agreement with a local municipality, which tends to be two interlocal agreements. 
So there's a lot of advantages to it. So Rick making the statement to go out and ask other towns to bid on it actually knows that they're going to come in higher because they have an advantage to do that. So when he makes a statement like that, and I usually try not to comment on stuff like that, but he actually knows he's beneficially benefiting from it because he happens to be a governmental agency. So it's not apples and apples when you're comparing bid documents and stuff. you got to look at all that. But as things go forward, and you guys, you know, we've been listening to uh, with changes that are going to occur with waste disposal, solid waste disposal. ACUA is doing transportation now, now hauling the trash out. As the landfill comes of age and it closes, uh, they're going to be hauling trash all the time. And those contracts, there's only so many people that could haul that kind of material out of a facility if you think you're going to manage it there. So if they think the costs are now are high, I really think as time goes on, especially when that landfill closes, you're going to see some big increases in trash. Unless technology gets and catches up to the point I've had guys ask me, you know, well, why don't we do something different with the trash and recycle and all this? You guys know and you've heard that China doesn't take the recycling. The materials that you're recycling is not recyclable to be able to use. You've got to, if you're going to change that, you've got to go back to your legislators, like I've told some people to do, and claim, complain to them to make all the material that you package all your products in recyclable. And then you can recycle it all. Of course, you'll probably add 20% to the cost of all the products. So the technology isn't there, but there's opportunities on the horizon that's coming that may help mitigate that. But waste disposal, liquid, solid, you're going to be having some issues with it as time goes forward unless you take advantage as to what you have now. The only thing I've always said about the, the solid waste business or, or any of it, competition is a good thing and allow competition to occur between the private sector and the public sector and have it on equal footing. It's not on exactly equal footing yet. There's going to be language that has to be done maybe at the state level that allows that to occur, or it's going to happen by the marketplace because it's simply not going to be able to dump in a local landfill because you're not going to get permits for any anymore. So there's changes that are going to be coming. So Rick making that statement, he knows. He has advantages that a private guy doesn't have. So just I'll leave it at that. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Of course. Of course. So, again, Jerry's right, and, and which I'll say, and he's right. We, Rick was here. If the municipalities, in my personal opinion, had and they had met with the municipalities according to Rick, and they knew these fees were coming, you don't wait till the eleventeenth hour to start texting the week of a vote. So what those municipalities should have been doing was drafting resolutions through their municipalities, objecting to those fees. Me personally, I don't think we have the authority to stop them. It's just my first opinion. Um, they knew it was coming. Nobody likes increases, but what are you going to do? They're they in the process of getting a new executive director, um, which I heard is coming up real fast. Um, second thing is, is that we knew the fees were coming. And then the other thing is, is that these three to seven, whatever years, they keep talking about this landfill closing, it's fast approaching, and there's been no real answers. So you think we're faced with people texting us now about the fees going up. Wait till the time comes, they start texting where the hell this trash is going. Because I don't think it's a real fast track in terms of trying to get that under control. What they tell us, five to seven years from now? Five to seven years. Right? Seven years. We, we, we already into the second year of that, that seven, if we're going to count it, right? Yeah. You started talking about it last year, we're into this year. Time is fast approaching what's going to happen. And I can't miss by make, not making this mistake. When when the gentleman came in and talked about the solid waste plant in Pleasantville, everybody started raising hell, right? So we're still in the same position when they made the presentation about the transfer station in Pleasantville. No answers. Where Where is it going to go when the time comes? Lip service, headlines, has not answered the question. So we're going to be piled up with trash and Eventually, it's going to be hauled somewhere. Where do we make the final decision? Hey, well, this is going to be, and I, I believe Pleasantville is still pushing. You, you still have some of those who are against the transfer station in Pleasantville, mm -hmm. but you still have those who support the transfer station in Pleasantville. And that's not all those materials we're talking about. The fact of the matter is something has to give. Um, we probably, I mean, 
we took our shot at the MU, uh, uh, ACUA regarding the campaign they did about no dump in Pleasantville. And listen, we can come back six months from now and still say no dump in Pleasantville, which is not a dump. So we're clear about that part. What's the solution, right? Because two years from now, I'll still probably be sitting there. Three years from now, we'll be still sitting there and we still be talking about the same. Where are we putting it? And unfortunate, the municipalities waited to the week of a vote to start talking about, you know, the fees going up. They had their meetings last week. We just that would be still here over a month ago. Right. And, and then, and then they were told that their pension increased. I'm not talking about, about man, but, but now we're looking at this three-headed monster coming at them as they're formulating their budgets. Go, wait a minute. You just told us last week you're voting on it the week later. But, Rich, with all due respect, uh, they knew the budget was coming up. Sure. They knew those fees were coming up. It's no different than the county exec presenting the budget to us. We know it's coming. Right. And if we got any objections, we start objecting early on. And so what happens is the municipalities, I mean, maybe they can still petition the board over there and ask them to hold up, have a conversation. N nobody is interested in these high courses of health care. We're all getting beat up. Only one got got a pass on this health care is the state of New Jersey. Yeah, right. So we all we all get beat up. Whether it's a county, whether it's a municipality, we all getting beat up by it, right? We the city of Atlantic City. We're still trying to find a way out. But guess what? Ready or not, here it comes. Um, it is unfortunately, and Richard, you're right. If they got it the other day and it's for Thursday, the most they can do now as a town, show up the meeting. Talk about the objection to it, send letters, resolutions. But if the, if if we listen to what Doby said, he met with all these municipalities. Sure. And I don't believe he stood there and told us a lie. Because I didn't hear no municipalities come out and say right. he didn't meet with them. Um, so it didn't come, it doesn't come as a surprise. But even going forward, we as commissioners got to keep our eyes open in terms of when as close as we get to this landfill closing down. What's the alternative? We can't keep saying no to everything. At some point, we got to say yes to something. And what that yes is, I don't know at this point. But as 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 elected officials, we have we all say have a responsibility to our constituents, and we just hope it doesn't happen at the last minute, because none of us reap that benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. So, just just my. Three cent. Most of y'all say two cent, but that's my three cent. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, I do. Uh, I just say on, on what you just said, though, just to follow up, he, he met with everybody. We and he met with them. I think we met with him in November when he began discussing the budget with us. He had the meeting with towns prior. See, we're talking like <clears throat> September, October. So towns knew as early as September, October yeah, absolutely. that this was going on. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying they, maybe they just didn't know what to do. Maybe, maybe they had not sort of working on their budgets to realize the impact on their budgets. Obviously, the county, we start working on a budget much earlier. So we're, we're familiar with, you know, just, just because of our requirement to make a presentation in January, they, they don't have that same requirement. The other thing he did do when he was here, and that's why I, I suggested he's wrong, he gave you it's part of the long-range plan. So there is a plan beyond the seven years. So there, again, whether or not it's right or wrong, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making that as, as, a, as a qualifying what he said. I'm telling you what he said. He's got a plan, and he's been through the plan with us several times on what they propose to do. Part of that plan, they, they've, had, they've been doing this with, with one of the counties for years. I mean, they, they, they do. They bring trash there. They yeah, all that. That, no, that, no, county, that county right. brings recycling here. We're, we're, we're going right. to be more of a transfer station, yes. and, and and we understand what that long term plan is <laughs> and, and the details. And I didn't want to hash that tonight. I, you're right. We do need to start having these discussions before it comes up right. on what exactly the plan is, and if we're all happy with that plan. And, and another thing, we have municipalities that just went through rework, so we have new leadership. Everywhere. Right. So you have a lot of folks that are sitting in front of this information, even if he did his due diligence. We have a lot of folks that are sitting in front of this information brand new and they're going, wait a minute. 
you guys are voting on this on Thursday. Well, I just got it on my desk last week. So you, you, we're getting those phone calls are also coming. And I'm not saying that's his responsibility or our responsibility, but I'm just saying in, in good faith. That's why I, I put it in the good of the order for that reason. I didn't want this to be. I, I don't want this to come across as though I'm questioning the ACUA or I don't like their plan. I'm just saying this is these are the things that are coming in, and I didn't want this meeting to end without us having a discussion do, about so what do, our role is and how we should move forward. So, Mr. Chair, do. You I mean, if I can ask, do, do you, you want to put a resolution forward asking the ACUA to postpone their public hearing, given the questions and feedback coming in from uh, municipalities and newly elected officials? I mean, I, that's the only thing I think we could do, right? So, so Matt, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I, I may. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, so, and, that's, so, and, that's, and you know, I appreciate that. Well, point I, don't I, don't know, I don't know how much of a hardship. I, I don't know. You know, I really don't. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I have that answer. That's a good recommendation. I appreciate that. I, I don't know. Like, what would that entail? Is that is that something that's going to be a heavy burden for the ACUA to be able to do that? Or, you know, I don't want to write a resolution or propose a resolution without knowing the ramifications of it. So if I can, Mr. Chairman, to you, to, to the vice chair, also as, as, a, as a governing body, and the recommendation of the county exec, we appoint members to the board. Correct. Right? Correct. So we have some say, but not, not say, right? Kind of sort. So if it's Amy's, the Commissioner Gatto's recommendation that we do a resolution, at least we're appealing to those who we appointed to the board. Hey, listen, we've gotten some requests or some comments, blah, 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 from people. We take a week off, review it, hear back from them. I'm not going to say it's going to change their vote, right? But at least it's time to get educated. Just give them time to get educated and have that. It, it may work and it may not. I mean, we can do a resolution. They can they can listen to it or not. Again, it's it's. I think that's the way we make our voice. That's the best way that we can as a collective body. I, make I our think voice, so. Our voice are they on a time frame or something like? You know, it's already in place, like, Mr. Chair. Fees are already in place. Sir. Commissioner Bowes. So, um, the first of the year. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, from what I recall, when, when Rick was here, um, the date that the, the fee increase was going at, in effect and actually being out at the, the transfer station to, to uh, put something into the dome, um, the signs where they were going into effect as of January 1st. January 1st. So, I think they're in effect already. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as any, any contracts that ACUA has with municipalities, I think that's we're, we're talking about apples and oranges, but from from what I'm hearing and what I what I understand, you know, even though ACUA is a quasi county entity, the board of commissioners really has no oversight. They have their own board. Um, I mean, right. we can dislike, you know, the increase. We can dislike the way it's ran, or we can love the way it's ran. But as far as you know, well, um, well, let, let if we're, we're, if we're talking about it, putting a, a resolution forward tonight, it would have to be tonight because okay. their meeting is two days from now. Yeah. And if we're asking them to hold off on an increase that already went into it's effect, effect, how do we do that? Well, it might be pending. There's, it, well, I, I, let, me, let me suggest. I'm not I, sure. I think a better approach to this whole thing, a much better approach, I think, that we have our solid waste committee work with the ACUA and look, talk about projections in the future. Look, we're not gonna solve this problem tonight or tomorrow night or next month, but what we need to do, I think, is to become better educated with a committee that works with the ACUA to look at long range projections and try to um, be more precise in what we're up against two years, three years, four years, Six years, seven years from now. That's I, that's the only thing I can see that we can possibly do. I could be wrong on this, but that's my thought. I think I got a letter from the Mayor's Association. I think so as well. I think so as well. I'm just wondering, can I kind of finish what I please. was? I'm sorry, please. Okay. Um, other than that, I mean, is there a point where we have any over oversight or any any say as far as you know, like you know, from what I'm being emailed? 
you know, their, their employees get lifetime benefits. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I'm being told that whether it's a rumor or whatever, that when they bring in a new executive director, they're going to hire Rick back as a consultant. I mean, this is well, these are parts, all parts and parcel as to why we have increases too. But you know, we're getting the we're getting the calls and the emails, but we have no oversight of that. That's right. That's right. Just without beating the dead horse, the only thing you really have for oversight uh, from the county is over the ACOA is uh, one you have oversight on the on the approval of the solid waste management plan. Uh, recommendations are going to come from the state and the ACOA. That all comes through here. The county that the management plan you approve it, and it's under your purview. Uh, ACOA generally, I think the county executive has the right to refuse minutes yes. from their meetings. We know about all that. He has limited oversight as well. Uh, if they have an independent board, and the board, of course, we all, as we stated earlier, uh, members come here for us to approve or advise and consent. And we do the consent point of it. That's the time. And I know you have all have asked a lot of questions when those members come in here. And hopefully they remember the answers they gave you to the questions you asked when they go sit on the board. Because some of these questions you guys did talk to them about, especially the members in the last year or two that have joined the board. Uh, you actually questioned them specifically about uh, the future. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep an open mind? Are you talking about uh, competition? Are you talking about... You asked all those questions, and now I'd call those members on those, the, the few that we've had in the last recently that we've approved, and call them on if they're not, if that position has changed. But that's your limited, that's what you guys, uh, really your, where your oversight is. They're an independent board. Yes. Guys, runs mm -hmm. its own budgets, runs its own. But we do have some, when when it comes to the, um, the uh, solid waste management plan, how the ACOA can do, what they can do, you approve that through this board. Commissioners do that. And they'll be coming for an amendment if there's change the way they do stuff there, and you're going to have a chance to have your say uh, when the time comes to approve it or not approve it. But then at that point, some of the damage is already done anyway. Right. 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 Yeah. And the state's approved it already. The state will approve it all the time before you get it, but you don't know if you have to say yes when the state says so. so it's your call in Atlanta County. I believe it comes before you on an amendment to the waste management plan and on a 10 year review. So I believe those are the, the, the ways that it could come before you. So, what's the wish of the board, Mr. Chairman? Chairman, say again. What is the wish of the board, Mr. Chairman? Well, that's a good question. I, I don't see taking action tonight necessarily the appropriate thing. I just said before, I. Ready in place. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that we should, as a part of the board of the committee, solid waste committee, uh, meet with the ACUA to get answers and look at, you know, the projections going forward, two, four, five, seven years out and beyond. I think that's would be a more appropriate role to that's knowing what we're up against. I, I just, and knowing what we can do, because frankly, they presented to us their plan or their strategy or whatever right. in this budget meeting that we had. Right. And I mean, we brought up the, some things about, you know, uh, contractor recycling um, on small job sites and things like that. And they kind of <coughs> blew it off, to be mm -hmm. frank. Yeah. So, um, well, not to be frank, Dallas, but uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean... They can tell us the plans, but what input do we have and um, how can we kind of enforce a strategy that we're happy with? Uh, well, that's my question. Okay. question. So what happens is they get past Thursday. They got to come back again next year. So we need to be preparing ourselves for the next year's. That's my point. So, I mean, that's my point. It's so unfortunate we hit the 11th hour and that's where we are. Right. Answers to your questions. I think the, the, the real deal is, Mr. Chairman, and to the vice chair, I think you put it on the record. So those people have been texting. It has not gone unanswered, but we basically were hit with our hands crossed. But we need to put them on notice, the ACUA, going forward. So it's got a little bit better job. And I'm not, like I said, he came in and made his presentation. Um, 
We right. had some questions, well, one of these type of questions, and the municipalities they met with, <clears throat> they knew the reasons for the hits were coming. And yes, everybody got kind of sidetracked with the uh, health benefits. Um, and, and, that, and that's a big hit for everybody. So, yeah. And then we start to hear more details, like what Frank brought up, like you start to hear more things about what they're planning to do, and then people don't like some of the things that they're hearing and how that affects the money. Because that does come back to to us. We can start talking. We start talking about policies. But when you start talking about taxpayers' yes. money, that does come back into our purview. So how they're spending taxpayers' money, we can question. We this. we should absolutely question those things because if <clears throat> hiring practices or it is, it is a... internal, you know, staffing or like you said, I don't know. Do they have lifetime benefits? I have no idea. You know, I have no idea. But if they do, that's something that we should know, and that's something that we should be, you know, kind of sit about because that's taxpayer money. It, is it? Is it not? I don't think it is. Ratepayer money. It's ratepayer rate money. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't. Taxpayer money because each municipality is paying into it. Paying money. It's still taxpayer money at the end of the day. Private and public. All right, so that's, there's no more right, so, today. All right. Really we have discussed it. Do we know that anything else for the good of the order? Now I'll entertain Mr. a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, seeing no other order of the day, the business, I'll make a motion for adjournment. Thank you. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 I'm saying that you're That's that's what I'm saying. We got to stay funny to pay the growth. We got to stay funny to pay the growth. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the way. So, see?